I'd like to call to order uh, the Berea Code Enforcement uh, Special Call Session for Tuesday, January the 18th, 4.30 p.m. Uh, I know according to the agenda, we are need to recognize the visitors at this time, and we'd like to say to uh, all the visitors, if uh, there's a particular issue on the agenda that you would like to speak to, uh, you will be recognized at that time and you will be allowed to speak. Anyone have any, anything you just want to say right now or you want to wait to then? We'll do that. All right. Uh, and also, I think it would be appropriate if we introduce ourselves, the Code Enforcement Board. So I'll start on my, on my far left. Tom Schultz. James Anderson. I'm Andrew Baskin. I'm the chair. Ken Vasey. Terry Bingham. Jerry Gilbert, Corporate Counsel. Okay. And we'll introduce Amanda and Melissa later. Now, next item on the agenda, uh, since this is the first meeting of the new year, is the election of officers. And our tradition is when it comes to the election of officers that we'll turn it over to Amanda and let her uh, preside at this point. Amanda. Okay. So at this time, I will call for nominations of the chairman position. Any nominations for the position of chairman at this time? Andrew Baskin. Andrew, do you accept the nomination for yes. chairman? Yes, I do. Okay. Other nominations? All right. And we will recognize uh, by I by signifying raise your hands by <laughs> signifying <laughs> I, <laughs> whatever the, uh, any opposed as nay thank you Andrew um, and at this time we will take nominations for the position of vice chair Ken Vasey can you accept the nomination yes okay thank you Ken um, all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Any opposed? I did a little better the second go round. Um, so that's all we have as a, a chair and a vice chair for this board. Thank you, and thank you to uh, the members of the uh, of the board for your trust in my leadership. At this time, item number three on the agenda, uh, item number four on the agenda, is the approval of the of uh, the minutes from June the eighth, two thousand and twenty one. And I think they were in the email. May I have a motion to deal with the minutes of the, the meeting from June the 8th? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been motion and second to approve the minutes uh, from June the 8th. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? M motion passes. Uh, new business. The new business deals with 111 Adams Street, uh, Tammy Knuckles, inoperable vehicle, rubbish, minimum housing standards. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, will you swear in uh, Mrs. Haney so, uh, for, so she may give her uh, testimony? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. The witness has been sworn, Mr. Chair. Okay. You may go ahead. Thank you. Um, so again, as uh, Mr. Baskin said, we are here to discuss the matters of 111 <coughs> Adams Street. Um, so we initially got a um, complaint uh, to the codes office that an accessory, a detached accessory structure was being used as a primary dwelling. Um, so that was in August, I'm sorry, May of uh, 2021. So we sent that notice in August of last year, we started receiving several more complaints concerning the amount of rubbish and trash at the property. I actually personally went down to, um, this was the first notice that we sent, so I'll kind of show you these up on the board. Um, so in, in August, I personally went down there, spoke to Miss Knuckles, um, told her that um, she had had some complaints about the trash and about someone living in the accessory structure. And at the time, she was unable to um, to haul the trash away she just didn't have the means to haul the trash away so i uh, made um, 
arrangements with our public works department that if she would bring this stuff out to the curb that the city would pick that up and we would charge her for that and we've done that on several occasions so we charge people the dump bill that waste connections would charge us to send to the transfer station plus a minimum fee for using our um, equipment and labor so that fee for that pickup was hundred and twenty dollars it stayed somewhat straightened up for a little while until October we started receiving more complaints um, again about the trash and rubbish um, the city once again made um, arrangements for that rubbish to be picked up so she brought the stuff out to the curb and that was at a cost of $110 so a bill was sent for $230 to Miss Knuckles for the cost of both of these cleanups and at that time I also notified her that the vehicle that you see um, in the picture that was up on blocks not in the driveway it's inoperable and it is not currently licensed um, I, I let her know that that was um, not in accordance with our city regulations that she in fact had to get that either off the removed from the lot or repaired licensed operable and back into the driveway um, and then again still complaints were coming in um, stating that someone was occupying the detached structure so in my conversations with Miss Knuckles about that um, I have been told that her brother um, hangs out in the storage building but doesn't live in the storage building so we know that it doesn't meet minimum housing standards there's no water there's no there's probably electric to the building I would assume but no water no sanitary facilities and so certainly not and it's not zoned for them to have two houses on one lot there so um, anyway just let her know that 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 was the case um, if he was staying there at night and sleeping there he was not able to do that and that that must cease immediately um, these were some pictures from October that I took um, oh sorry just, just a picture but again you can see parts of the rubbish um, here's the bill that we sent her for $230 in December I mailed Miss Knuckles um, what I noted was a final notice to say that the vehicle had to be repaired the rubbish must be removed and that no one could live in the accessory structure or we would schedule this codes board hearing and so I gave her a deadline of um, early January to um, to have all those things done and then as of Friday January the 14th it was still in about the same condition um, so here's the December pictures the last time I sent her the notice And so it looks to me like there's some household garbage along with the rubbish the inoperable vehicle and then that storage building um, is the building that the one with the blue tarp in this picture so these are the pictures as of January the 14th um, that was last Friday so it does appear they've made some attempt to move some of the stuff to a trailer on the lot but it's still not removed from the lot and then it appears that there's still um, rubbish behind the building and behind the house so the codes office is asking uh, that the code enforcement board allow the city to have the rubbish removed from the property by a contractor and place a lien against the property for any cost incurred um, that we set a deadline for Miss Knuckles to have the vehicle repaired or enforce a hundred dollar a day fine starting today if that deadline is not met which would also result in a lien against the property and an issue an, or, an order issue an order that the accessory structure may not be used for habitation so I'll take any questions that you might have of me Any questions for anyone else? Any member of the uh, the board? All right. 
There are none right now. All right. So, uh, Mrs. Knuckles, is, is there Mrs. Knuckles? Is she here? Uh -huh. Okay. Would you like to speak? Okay. Well, would you please be sworn in by the attorney? Can you come up to that podium over there? I've got the microphone on for you. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. A witness has been sworn, Mr. Chairman. All right. Mr. Knuckles, you may speak. Uh, I was telling her that I lost my son and my husband. I lost them one right behind the other. On, uh, I lost my son, Daniel, on um, October the 3rd, 2020, and I lost my husband on December the 24th, 2020. And I let my brother and his wife come down and spend a little time with me, you know, because I've been having health problems and everything. And I've just been having a bad, rough time. And I've told my brother not to bring nothing there, you know, and put it, put it there, you know. I told him, I said, look, I can't do this, you know. I said, I live in a city. And uh, I said, uh, I need it, you know, I need you to get it out of here. So he told me today and last night that he would move it for me, but he hadn't, it snowed and everything, and he wasn't able to get it all, but, um, but I've got somebody else that says they will help me move it too, but they're having a hard time too, you know, with gas problems and everything, and I was just wondering if, I had t how long I would have time to move everything because I'm having a rough time and I can't do it all by myself. Well, I, I will attempt to answer your question. Uh, what, we, what we will do after we hear from everyone is we will adjourn and we will go into executive session. And uh, I'm not going to say what we will decide or won't decide. I will only say to you, Mrs. Knuckles, based upon what has happened in the past, we have tried to work with citizens and given them time to correct the, the, the problem or the situation. I have never had nothing like this to come about with me. I've never had no problem with nothing. I've lived there for a long time, a long time, and I've never had no problem, no issues. Well, I would, uh, what I'm starting to say, and I, I would say if it would help you, and first of all, I know speaking for all members of the board, we are sorry for your loss within such a double loss within such a short period of time. Yeah. But what I am saying is that we, we, have, we have hearts because we are all uh, citizens and we've all, uh, I would think, experienced some, some difficult days that quite often we didn't prepare for. So I would say... Do not think that there will be a decision made today because normally what happens is it takes us a while. We make a decision and then we have to communicate it to the attorney and it takes a while to get back. So there will be some time there. And in terms of a decision, uh, I would also, I, and I, the board, board can let me know if I'm speaking out of turn. We have tried to work with everyone and we know that. So I, if that will help make you feel better so i'm saying that we have a wide range we could say well we're not going to enforce anything right now and give you x amount of days to get the problem taken care of i'm not saying what the decision is but i'm trying to put you at rest and to say that we try we and the code enforcement try to work with the systems okay I know okay do. so so if that will help make you feel any better but that's, I think, I'll express what we normally do. I will attest to her hardships as, as I have been personally <coughs> going to her house to, to try to rectify this situation. It, it is very evident that there is a hardship. And um, so I think that is, you know, one of the reasons that the city offered to come and clean up a couple times and do what we could. And what I've told Miss Knuckles is that she should um, she should ask for the amount of time that she thinks that she needs 
um, that's what her role is to is today is to tell us time. about what kind of time frame that she thinks she'll be able to get these things done I don't know exactly you know I, I, I'd like to have time you know to get it but I mean it looks like there's a big lot there in that one picture but really they're not a great big lot because two loads could take it probably all you know and I've told my brother, you know, I've worked with him and I've tried to be nice to him and stuff, and he's on drugs. You know what I'm saying? And I've tried not to put him out on the street. And I told him, you know, that's what killed my son, was heroin. And I'm very, very against that. And my mom's in the hospital right now. She's almost died too. And uh, she fell down a set of stairs and broke her, uh, broke some of her bones and everything and uh, broke her pelvis and broke both of her jaw bones and me and my family I mean we've been having a rough time I'm telling but I don't know how long y'all would want to give me you know I don't know but I sure don't want to lose my home you know what I'm saying yes sir I sure don't may I ask a question mm-hmm Tammy, is the vehicle in your name? Yeah. Okay. I, it's like, it's insured. I just got to put my license on it. It's it's insured. And it's got to have a a water pump on it. Is it operating right now or not? No, it's just sitting there right now. But now it's down off of them block now. Did you have your hand up, Mrs. Weir? Um, is your brother's still living in that little building? No, he don't live with him. Him and his woman got him an apartment, but he's just back and forth, but he comes in my house and he stays in my house, but he'll go out there and, and hang out, you know, sometimes of a night and of a day, but he ain't been staying there much at my house. Any more questions for Mrs. Knuckles? Well, I think the question would be, how long would you need to get that cleaned up? I don't know, but what do you think? She helps me. She's one of my good friends. Yeah. Huh? A month, maybe? Yeah. That's one reason why the rest of that stuff ain't moved, but I took a lot, and there's none of that stuff um, come out of my house. It's just been stuff that he got in boxes and stuff, and he just <coughs> put them out there, and I went out there one day, and I saw it, and I said, look, Stevie, you can't do that, you know? I said, you cannot do that, and I mean, they catch me. I'll go to sleep. I'm diabetic, type 2 diabetic. And I'll go to sleep, you know what I'm saying? Because I get tired and weak. And I'll go outside and I'll look and there'll be this or there'll be that. You know what I'm saying? And with me losing my son and my my man, my husband, it, it's about killed me. It really has. Well, I would say once again, Mrs. Knuckles, that I'm partially to help answer the question is that it does take time for us after we make a decision and for the attorney to put everything in, into legal language. That normally takes two to three weeks. So you would have that time. And then you're going to have the time if we decide to give you additional time. So I'm saying to you, this is just my opinion, I think the 30 days is realistic, okay? Because it's going to take normally two to three weeks to get everything back from Mr. Gilbert. Okay, and then it's got to be delivered to you by certified mail, and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to talk about the post office, but then we have, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, that then that means that's going to take a little more time. So I think 30 days is realistic, but it's, it's going to take almost 30 days to go through the process of doing anything. Which so, means that you would end up with about 45 days yeah. from today before a deadline was set. So that would. Putting, 
I sure couldn't pay the hundred dollars a day. I'm fixed on disability and I barely can make it. Well, that hundred dollars a day only comes into uh, becomes an issue if after we give an order and if we give you a certain amount of time and if it's not the work is not done then then we can make it metro retro excuse me retroactive but the one hundred dollars once again is not an issue until the order comes because it's like they're making a recommendation but we're ha we have to, five of us will make the final decision yeah. So once again, I know that's, that's still hanging over your head, but I'm saying it does not have to be your immediate worry. Just go ahead and do what you were planning on doing. There's going to be some time there just by the way the bureaucracy works. I hope I'm making some sense. Yeah, you are. Thank you. Anyone else? Any visitor want to speak? Be sworn in, please. Give me your name. Be sworn in, please. And come to a microphone. Yes, sir. You can sit down, Mrs. Knuckles, if you want to. Thank you. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. A witness has been sworn, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, uh, my name is Christopher Miller. I live at 110 Adams Street, immediately across the street from uh, Ms. Knuckles, Tammy. And, uh, I'm here for a couple of reasons. I, I do want to attest uh, to the situation a couple ways. I want to attest to her character and her losses. I've been her neighbor for about 22, 23 years, and she's, uh, uh, you know, she's an honest person and has been pretty straight on things. But um, regarding some factual issues about the property, I guess I want to speak to those as a witness living across the street and daily observing. Uh, for example, that trailer in that picture on January 10th was brought in with additional garbage. It's not taking away anything that was on that property. I have a photo of it arriving on January 10th in the morning at about 8 o'clock. And I didn't know I could submit photos, Ms. Haney, or I would have provided some for you. Um, there was also a vehicle there today bringing in more garbage. Uh, basically, the brother is running some type of salvage business or secondhand or whatever off that property. So every time you took something away they bring in garbage two or three times a week I don't know if they have pickers or something it's usually early in the morning they bring in vehicles this morning it was a white van it's often a white van they bring bags of stuff out I don't believe he's been living he was living in the garage for at least a year up until uh, cold weather hit or until you all push the point and maybe he and they got this apartment, but they're not living in the garage. It doesn't appear they're living in the garage permanently, but they are arriving uh, at least two, three days a week, bringing materials onto the property to run this sort of secondhand business. So what I would ask you to do is, is not to uh, add to her punishments, but to make it clear that um, he can't live in that garage, that they can't run a salvage business or whatever off that property. That's not really been in the complaint, but that's the source of the garbage, the root of it all. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, I've not complained about the garbage. I've only complained about the living in the structure because that's been of concern to me. I knew that was not a, a rated structure and that that was part of the problem. But uh, uh, it's, it's really, she's kind of being victimized by her brother who doesn't listen to her and will not do what she asks uh, regarding this situation. So I know some of that, it, it, you know, is almost more of a social worker situation. It needs some other type of assistance besides your codes uh, work here. But uh, at least making it clear what the rules are, what, what can be done on that property may give her some leverage uh, regarding her brother to get him to stop abusing the property, her property in this situation. And making it clear to her that as owner, she's responsible for all his actions on that property. I think that might be clear to her, but she doesn't, this, she has struggles to, be able to make that clear to him or to enforce that so that's my statement I'd be happy to answer questions if somebody has questions but that's what I've observed thank you any questions all right thank you mr. yes ma'am Mac uh, back to the microphone please I just want to say that Mary and Chris has been the best people to me in the world they have and they have ever since I've lived in my property and I don't mean to cry, but when my man and my boy was home, I didn't have to deal with this. And I just, I just want to thank you, Chris and Mary, for helping me every way y'all have. You sure have, 
they've been good neighbors to me and Mary knows what I've been through and I got into it with my brother down there one night in front of them and it was cause that they were aggravating me and he had boys that were coming in and out down there and I didn't want people in my garage just doing drugs you know what I'm saying and I've known you for a long time too you've been awfully nice to me Ken I've known you for a long time. I didn't know if you know James passed away. I do. All right. Thank you. So I have a, I have a follow-up question about the, if there is some type of salvage business being run, does that, does some of that stuff ever leave the property? Yeah, he took a lot of it. Okay. I don't know what he does. But Wait a minute. Okay. What I've observed from across the street is a constant flow of stuff in and out, which is why you've done that. Now, I don't know where he's selling it at, and I don't know who brings it in. I've observed a number of people bringing it in in a number of different vehicles. Just in the last three weeks, I've seen a large black pickup truck bring in materials. Uh, I've seen the van bring in materials, and I saw them bring in that trailer on June 10, uh, uh, January 10th uh, full of stuff. There's less stuff on it now. I see them go in and out of that backyard. I don't know if they do some kind of sorting or whatever. In speaking to me, he made reference to somebody who, where he sold some stuff once, but I don't know. So that's what it appears to me, is there's some type of uh, salvage business or secondhand business being operated off of that property where it's, it's the storage and sorting area. Uh, although I observed deals going on back and forth where people have brought him stuff and asked him if he wanted to buy it, things along those lines too. The white van belongs to his his mother-in-law. His wife's mother is a good Christian woman, and uh, his wife drives that a lot. And she, they okay. They lost their home on. They used to live on Washington. They lost their home because they got on meth and stuff. And uh, his I do know the the van belongs to Beverly uh, Miller, her uh, his mother-in-law. And she, Bobby Joe, his wife is a, she's a good person and stuff. She, uh, her mom lets her borrow the van all the time to take the girls. He's got two girls, and uh, they're mostly with her all the time. But they're grown, you know. But uh, they won't hang around them long. But uh, she lets them uh, drive the van and take the kids to the doctors and stuff like that. That's how come the bands are, that white band. So I think in light of, of that, I would also make the re recommendation that if an order is issued, that it also contain the language that it is a R1 zone and not appropriate for any type of uh, secondhand or retail trade. Okay, anyone else? All right, so at this, if there are no more, no additional questions from the members of the board, okay, no final statements from anyone? Okay, at this time, may I have a motion so we, for, we, for us to go into executive, se mm -hmm. executive session? So move. Is there a second? Second. Been motion and second that the, uh, the board will go into executive session. All in favor of the motion, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, thank you everyone. Okay, everyone can. Everyone has to leave. Will, you, you, okay. you will be, uh, Amanda will be contacting you. Like I said, it's probably going to be at least two weeks. All right. Nice to meet you. And we're definitely praying for you also. Thank you.